They call him Sia the Bear Kolisi. After his school days in the Eastern Cape, it took him just over a decade to grow from eager schoolboy into a provincial rugby captain. And then the historic first black captain of the national team that won the World Cup in Japan in 2019. Now he has a new home team and is set about to pay forward his success. It's 8 o'clock in Durban and the humidity is unbearable. The Sharks team is already honing their skills and practicing drills under the scorching sun. Beautiful. World Cup Springbok captain Sia Kolisi is the latest addition to the team. I'm just excited to be here. Like I woke up happy this morning. I really want to be here and I want to make sure I bring good energy uh, to the guys, you know, and... It was called rugby's worst kept secret. Sia Khaleesi's move from the Stormers to the Sharks, which was announced at a press conference in February. You know, people are very uh, uh, welcoming, you know, um, amazing people who've actually called me to say welcome to the Sharks. And the beast, you know, he's like, do you, want, do you need some chicken? I can give you some wings, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. There it is. The bomb has sounded. First black captain, Sia Kolisi and the Springbok team brought elation to millions of South Africans who were cheering them on at the 2019 Rugby World Cup. And there is indeed a cup of gold at the end of the South African we come from different backgrounds, different races, and we came together with one goal and we wanted to achieve it. I really hope that we've done that for South Africa to show that we can achieve anything if we work together as one. After winning the World Cup and having the world at his feet, it's hard to imagine Sia Khaleesi as that young boy from Zuide who didn't even know where his next meal would come from. At times, Sia's grandmother only had sugar water to feed them. Rugby was a distraction from his hunger, and this field is where Sia would have played rugby at primary school. You were spotted by a rugby talent in silk shorts. Why were you playing rugby in silk shorts? Let's start there. Because uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I couldn't afford, um, I didn't have shorts, uh, yeah. rugby shorts, I couldn't afford that. It was actually a trial game, uh -huh. and there were three guys from my school. But my other two friends were good, my schoolmates. They were in the A-team and Gray wanted them and my teacher from my school said, if you want these two boys, you have to take this one too. Gray High School is a semi-private boys' school in Kabecha. Over the years, they've produced 14 Springbok rugby players. Although he was third choice, Kolisi was determined to succeed. 15-minute drive to come from the township to Gray and I walk in and I see the, the fields look like carpets compared to what I used to play. The fields were brown, there were patches of grass every now and then. There's just thorns everywhere and we had no shoes. And I just saw opportunity and I saw infrastructure that would allow me to be whatever I wanted to be. And then I walk in that building and like, my mindset just changed and I knew I have to make this work no matter what. Vincent Mai is an ex-South African businessman and philanthropist who went to Gray High School and started a scholarship program for township kids. Over 25 years, he has sponsored dozens of young men anonymously. First, I grew up in apartheid South Africa, and uh, I was a beneficiary as a white South African of a wonderful education. But I believe in equal opportunity for everybody. It's been one of the most fulfilling things in my life. Of course, what brings us here is the incredible one in a million chance that one of these kids is named Sia Khaleesi. Sorry. Beautiful drift pass from him to Khaleesi. At Grey High, Khaleesi never knew who sponsored him. After school, he spent 11 years in Cape Town. He made his senior debut for Western Province during the 2011 Vodacom Cup. Real momentum for the Stormers. He just has to crash over. He became captain for the Stormers in February 2017. The following year, he captained the Springboks. Learned a lot there and I really enjoyed it and I grew as a person as well. And also, then I started finding my purpose. And that's where a lot of my dreams were born, where I met my wife, my kids. So I, was, I have so many great memories there and I've always been grateful to the people of Cape Town 
Well, they welcomed me and my family. In January this year, New York lawyer Marco Mazzotti, who heads an international consortium, bought a 51% majority stake in the Sharks. He was born in Amanzim Dodi in KZN and is a staunch rugby supporter and believes that with his backing, the Sharks could become a global force in the world of rugby. Our vision matches the vision of the Sharks. You know, we're coming as shareholders, we're bringing different things to the table, but all we're doing is, is you know, we want to water the flower a little more so it blossoms and grow. All the seeds uh, are already there. We really do have a shared vision. We want to win. Mazzotti has plans to broaden their horizons to play in the Pro 16. How will the Sharks fans see the difference? They're going to see some exciting talent on the rugby field. They're going to be playing in Europe. It's, it's going to be different. So they're going to be playing against different franchises. Hopefully we'll have, you know, some of the Europeans uh, down at the games. And they're going to see a branding of the fan experience in a different way. It'll be more than just about rugby at the stadium. Vincent Mai also believes that this new partnership is bigger than the sport itself. Well, another dimension of how you use not just a great rugby team, but how you use a sports franchise to do community outreach, to inspire young children, and for things beyond rugby. During lockdown, Sia and his wife Rachel started the Kolisi Foundation. They established it to change the story of inequality in South Africa. During the pandemic, they distributed more than 33,000 food parcels. And for them, this is just the beginning. I'm still in South Africa. That's what I'm grateful for because then I can keep on investing and giving back to the community that I, wherever I go, basically, because my story doesn't only die in PE. My story is so many people all around South Africa. And that's the thing with the, with the foundation. We want to make sure that wherever we go, we're making a, a, a difference. The people who have invested in Mazzotti's company, MVM Holdings, includes Vincent Mai. Kulisi never knew who paid for his school fees, but asked Gray High to release that information when he became a Springbok. I emailed him and I just thanked him for everything. Then I sent him a picture of me and my family and I wrote a, a note to the bag and I said, listen, the schooling didn't only make me a great rugby player and everything. There's people that I've met in my life and where I am right now and this family wouldn't have happened without you, you know. They met for the first time in New York after the World Cup. One of the most moving experiences I've had because when he got out of the car, you know, there was such already a history between us. And I have to confess, when we hugged, I mean, I was all tearful. I mean, it was... It I was, was about to ask who was the <laughs> first to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Vincent Mai and other investors have committed to supporting the Khaleesi Foundation to allow Sia and Rachel to change more people's narratives. You want kids' dreams not to be limited. And also you need as many reference points as possible because now it became a reference point for someone else to say, you know what, he did it, I can also do it. I have a platform and my platform has been given to me by the people of South Africa, my family and the hard work, and I must make sure that I pay it back. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.